want to welcome all of His Glory Ministry from east to west to north to south as we bring you the latest in His Glory Ministry teaching. Today we'll be in Job 34. This is where Job is again being persecuted by the young buck Elihu. And we're going to see how that Job continues to take the abuse, continues to finish the race until God shows up in chapter 38, which is four more chapters. But Job is showing us the perseverance to overcome. Again, putting this back in perspective, we didn't, uh, Job did not know why he was being persecuted. But God gives us the advantage of seeing why through the Holy Spirit and through the Word of God, which is Jesus Christ. We see that this has all been a test because Satan thought Job was protected, had a hedge of protection around him from the Most High God. And Satan says, well, let me sift him then. You take that hedge away and he'll curse you. You take his health away. You take his riches away. You take it all away. Will he honor you? That's the question he's asking us today on this Good Friday, the Friday that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ took it to the cross that we would be persevere. We would do it for his name's sake. We'd do it for his glory. We'd do it for his purpose. And we'd do it out of our heart because it's a love relationship. So there's much for us to glean out of this teaching that Job, no matter what the world does, continued. And that gives us hope to continue when the world's against us because the world is gonna be against us. We're persecuted all over the world today. Persecution to the church in the Middle East and China and, and, and uh, India, especially Iran, bringing people to death. We mentioned the other day, Gomer, who is Turkey in the Ezekiel 38 and 39 war, part of NATO, has now said that Christians are considered terrorists. And the persecution's coming into the church, the church here in the United States, because standing up for the infallible literal word of God is, 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 is not politically correct. People want their watered down church. People want their itchy ears. They want to hear what they want to hear. And that's why the love of cold or a love of the heart has grown cold. And that's why we see these children today that are outside of, of, of respect for their elders and this world melting down, especially in the United States, this division. And Jesus said, I will divide. And he's showing this, this on this Good Friday. But for that remnant that loves him with all our heart, our soul, and our mind, this is to give us hope hope to finish the race and know why the Lord is doing it. The world is a test. What will we choose? Will we choose Jesus Christ with our heart, soul, and our mind? Or will we choose anything else? Satan doesn't remember. Satan doesn't care. Take it all away. I want him to bow down to me. I want him to curse you, God. Satan doesn't care what Job picks as long as it's not God. Satan doesn't care what you pick today as long as it's not Jesus Christ. And that's the test for us. Do we accept him in our heart, our soul, and our mind? And do we live and walk in his, his glory? And do we finish the race? Because it's not if we're going to be persecuted. We will be persecuted. We need more modern day Jobs. Uh, so let's stand into the word and get into it. So the young buck again answered and said, Hear my words, you wise men. Give ear to me, you have knowledge. Going off like he is in charge of the world. Like the, the, you, the, he's teaching them. Just like we're seeing on TV and we're seeing on the social media, these young kids, you know, the horrible situation happened with the shooting and we, we should have a debate. We want to protect our kids. We love our kids and we want to do what's right for the kids. But we can have we, we can have legislation. We can talk about it without being vile and being disrespectful and hanging up and calling for boycotts of certain uh, particular people and just your head start getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, hanging up on the president of the United States, calling senators murderers, calling the NRA this, that, or other thing. Come on, that's not the love of Christ. And if you're supporting them, and if you're in this vile nature, that is not of Christ. We need to be that light in this darkness and say, wait a minute, let's take a step back. The reason we're in this situation to begin with is because we took God out of school. We took God out of the government. We took God out of our life. We took God out of the family. We put Jesus Christ back in where he belongs as the head, and things will go better for us because this is a test. It's not what happens in the flesh here. It's what we choose with our heart. We need to get more love. We need to get that brightness back. We need that light of Christ. We need the people to pick up the word of God. We need the Holy Spirit to be inspired on them and in them and with them and through them and have that light of these young youth that are like the, the prophet Joel saying they will prophesy they'll, 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 they'll do signs and wonders that's the revival we're looking for not vile you can look at it very clearly 
When these people talk this way, whether it's pundits on TV or political people or government people or these young kids trying to get what they want, and it may be a good reason for what they want, but how are they going about it? Is it vile? Is it of God? Is it of scripture? Or are they walking in the precepts of God with light through Jesus Christ? It's being divided, light and dark, light and dark. And we have to choose. That's why we're here, to choose the light or the dark. For ears test words as palate tastes food. We need to listen. That's why Jesus says, let he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. We want to bark too much today. We want to be vile and fight back on Twitter or fight back on social media and fight back and call this person another name and just take, take it up, top, up, up. That's vileness. That's of Satan. Satan's looking back and saying, these knuckleheads are falling for this. This is working perfectly. We need more lights of Christ. We need Christ to be the center of every of the pillars of society. That's why you're seeing the exposure and the seven, seven of, uh, uh, mountains of society, the, 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 the government, we're seeing a uh, movie industry, we're seeing all the things that the man and women look to as idols in their life are falling down. We're seeing God raise up a remnant of his glory in the midst of this. You notice that the movies now, there are more Christian movies than any time I've ever seen. And it's starting to happen more and more and more. And this is just the beginning of a huge outpouring that the God Almighty will be in every of the seven pillars. And there will be a revival like we haven't seen any time since the history of the world, just like the scripture says. So uh, verse four, so he chooses justice for ourselves and let no one among ourselves what is good. For Job has said, I am righteous, but God, Elohim, has taken my justice. The only way we are righteous is through is accredited to us by righteous by our faith in the Lord. Job has faith in the Lord. Yes, sometimes we go, Lord, why am I going through these trials and tribulations? We still have our faith, but we're questioning why, why, why? How much more can I take? How much more can I take? But Job, we know, is being sifted by Satan, taking him to the brink, the very brink many times. And he's just trying to crush him. But Job is hanging on. He's hanging on. He's hanging on with that faith. And that's the only thing that's accredited to us as righteous. Should I lie concerning my right? My wound is incurable, though I am without transgression. Hip, again, we are all through the, the, the sin nature of Adam. We have to give salvation to the Lord, and we have to walk in a way that, that, is, that is in his ways. What goes in the company in the worker of iniquity and walks with wicked men? We have to walk in the light. We have to walk with people around us that are of the Lord. For he said, it profits a man nothing that he should take delight in Elohim. Therefore, listen to me, you men of understanding. Far be it from Elohim to do wickedness and from the Almighty to commit iniquity. He's got that part right. The Lord will not do an iniquity. He's allowing Satan to trust, test us. And we are being tested. If you are a threat to Satan, Jesus tells us you will be tested. Pick up your cross and follow me. Well, you're picking up your cross. That cross is a sign of the living Christ. And Satan's going to put you in the, in, in, the, in the crosshairs. And we need to put up the full armor of God in Ephesians 6.10, the five defensive elements and the two offensive elements, the word and artillery prayer of the, of the prayers, the intercessor prayer of the spirit. For he repays man according to his work. And that is true. An eye for an eye. That's what it will be at the end days. That will be at the, the, the white throne judgment for those who denied Christ. It will be an eye for an eye. Exactly the way the scripture said we see that in the rich man in, in the book of, of Luke, where he had a fire on his tongue for eternity. Why? Because he never fed Lazarus. And that was the eye for an eye, or in this case, a tongue for a tongue. Surely Elohim will never do wickedly, nor will the Almighty pervert justice. He will never go against his precepts and commandments. Justice will always reign. He may allow the sifting to go for a while, but he's ultimately in control the key is, how much do you trust him? Every day, God is asking us, how much do you trust me? How much do you love me? How much are you going to trust me that I can get you through anything? And he's done that with my life. I had somebody come forward this week in one of our, I don't remember where it came from, but he said, I've been following your story for many, many years, and I've seen everything that you've gone through. Well, I haven't seen the, the, the trials and tribulations for his glory because we haven't made that public yet people will be blown away with part three of the his glory trials and tribulations because once we started this ministry these last few years of the of the the attacks have been absolutely un, insane satan has not wanted this ministry to go out why 
because it's bringing in thousands of people and it's bringing in people to every single nation under the sun exactly the way the great commission said exactly the way christ told us to go out and preach the gospel from east to west to north to south to every nation every tongue every creature and that's what's happening so there's a tax so this, this this follower of ours said you're a modern day job and i think i i, I, I like that not like that because of myself but that god is testing us and i want to be like job I want to finish the way Job does and never crack, never fold, and go through the trials and tribulations and stay strong in the love of the Lord. That's what it's all about, finishing the race, as Paul said, because the more we're tried in the fire like Abraham was, the more he's going to use us for his purpose and his glory. Who gave him charge over the earth, who appointed him over the whole world? If he should set his heart on it, he, he, he should gather there himself his spirit and his breath. God can do all things. His spirit, his length, his arm is everywhere. He says over and over in scripture, is my arm too short? He, meaning I can grab anything, anytime, and I can change it like this. I am that I am. I'm the controller of all things. I have you in the palm of my hand. All I ask of you is to love me. Forgive, ask for forgiveness of your sins and then trust me and walk hand in hand with me. I don't want anything more than that. I just want a heart and a love relationship. I want to call you friend. I want to call you son and daughter. That's all he's asking. And I want you to trust me, not this world. And sometimes we have to go through these incredible trials and tribulations because we trust the world. I look at some of the, the first time of my trials and tribulations and some of the lawyers I had and the advice they gave and it was just like, insane the only good advice because i was in such a pickle was god you had to turn to god god is the only one that could have got us out of it and god is always there to get you out of every step to give you life as he gave me life two times I mean, now that i looked at it in the cleveland clinic getting listeria a couple years ago they showed me that it was actually a third time that my heart had stopped so three times and two that i was aware of god is good god is great but he tests us to show how much are you going to put everything in and trust me, my son or daughter? If you have understanding, hear this, listen to the sounds of my words. Listen to the sound, not of his, Eliu's words, but the word of the Lord, because that's the only truth in this world of fake. Fake church, fake news, fake everything. Is it fitting to say to a king, you are worthless and nobles, you are wicked? It, it, the scripture tells us, you know, we're to honor, uh, honor of the government. Uh, it tells us in Hebrews, it tells us in Romans. We have so many people, whether it was in Obama or whether it was in Trump today, that are vile to the President of the United States. The scripture tells us that God raises kings and lowers kings for his purpose and his glory. Nebuchadnezzar and Cyrus were not necessarily godly kings, but God used them for a purpose. We're not saying Obama or Trump or Clinton or Bush or any of those, but God puts kings in and presidents in for his purpose and his glory. And it says we are to be obedient to our government unless they go against the precepts of God's word, because God's word is 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 the the elite, the the, the, the number one. Is it uh, yet he has not partial to princes, nor does he reign the rich more than the poor, for they are the work of his hands. He doesn't treat a president better than he treats Lazarus the, the beggar. Everything is just. Everything is based on not what money you have, not stature you have, but the condition of one's heart. Do you love me? That's all that matters to the Lord. In a moment they die, in the middle of the night, the people are shaken and pass away. The mighty are taken away without a hand. They come and they go, Hobbes, they come and they go. They'll raise all the way up with wickedness all their lives and all of a sudden they'll get to an age and they're gone. They're no more. Life is but a vapor. What was it worth? Was it worth all this vileness and wickedness? As David says in Psalm 2, why do the kings rage? Why do the wicked take a vain thing? Why do they come against my anointed, meaning the Messiah? He who is in heaven sits and laughs. He will hold them in derision. God's got it. And they just go through these things like they're, they're, they're going to be able to outdo God as Nimrod tried to run the Tower of Babel all the way up to God. And if you read the book of Yasser, he wasn't raising, raising up the, power of, uh, or the, the Tower of Babel just to have a high tower. And not just to get up to be like the high God because he was an antichrist because Satan wants to be like God. So he wants to be in the high tower. No, the book of Yasser tells us they're literally trying to shoot God out of heaven. That's how insane the world has gotten. And God is saying, I am God. You are not. You are a creation. I am the creator. I give you free will. Do you trust me and love me with all your heart, your soul, and your mind? That's what I look for. 
Nothing in this world you're going to do, you're going to impress me. I don't care how many towers you build. I don't care what you do in the world. It's just things. I am God. I am the beginning and the end. I see all things. I'm creator of all things. I had everything in, in, known before the beginning of time. For his eyes are on the ways of man. He sees all steps. He watches us always, good and bad. It will be put in a book. It will be written, and we will be held accountable, good or bad. There is no darkness nor shadow of death where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. No place to hide from God. That's why the wicked are getting dealt with in the, in the world today. God is taking away this, the curtain. He's shining the light on the dark. For he need no further consider a man that he should go before Elohim in judgment. There will be judgment to all men and women on the face of the earth, what we've done. And we want that report card to be for love. That's what it's all about. He breaks in pieces mighty men without inquiry and sets others in place. He raises and lowers as he will. Therefore, he knows their works. He overthrows them in the night, and they are crushed. Everything will be for his purpose, and everything will be for his glory. He does things the way that we wouldn't think they would, and it's for his purpose and his glory. He strikes them as a wicked man in the open sight of others because they turned back from him and would not consider any of his ways. They were struck because they turned with hardness and would not consider his ways. Look how much he pleaded with the Israelites. All he wanted to do is have a love relationship. All he wanted to do was be married. And it wasn't about sacrifice. It wasn't about circumcision. It wasn't about burnt offerings. It was always about a love relationship. Do you love me? If you love me, then you want to be intimate with me. You won't have all these false gods and idols in your locker. You won't go to the high places and burn incense to other gods. You, are, do you not see that I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? I am I not the one in the burning bush that says, I am that I am? I see the beginning, I see the end, and you do these things in darkness. I am light. You're not going to get away with it. Come to me. That's all I've ever asked is to have a love relationship of the heart. When he gives quietness, who then can make trouble? And he hides his face, and then he, who can see him? Whether it's against the nation or man alone. And sometimes when we're, we're alone, we don't hear from him. And it's, it gets scary because I've gone through those, so many trials and tribulations uh, of my life. Uh, three really periods. You know, the first trial and tribulation that was on the Steve Harvey show that you can get on our website. The second trial and tribulation was the, the near-death experience of seeing a vision of heaven or taste of heaven and a vision of Jesus. Getting me on the track. And then from his glory perspective that ha we haven't come out with public yet, but it will come public. Uh, just the trials and tribulations for his name's sake. Just the, just the, what Satan has done to try to stop us. Anything and everything you can possibly imagine, he's tried and he's continuing to do. But at the end of the day, it's his ministry called by his name and he will triumph. And we're going to con continue to carry on. We're going to continue to finish the race. It's not because of anything other than it's the love that we have for him that compels us. For has anyone said to Elohim, I have born of chastening, I will offend no more. Teach me what I do not see. If I have done iniquity, I will do no more. That's what we could tell. Show me, Lord, what have I done that I shouldn't do? That's one of the things I pray every night because even though I have salvation of the Lord and I'm, I'm walking in his path, I'm a sinner and I will be a sinner to the day God takes me home. And I'm a work in progress. So I, every day, Lord, t tell me, show me if there's anything that I'm doing that is not as good to you not walking in your way, make that be available to me so I can see it, so I can change it, so I can recheck my steps, so I can get stronger each day. What we call that in the business world was a post-mortem. Taking a look at your business year or your business quarter and say, what did we do good? What did we do need to work on? And we're always looking at things that we need to work on. And the most amazing thing, the more we get in the Bible, the more we get into the Holy Spirit, the more that he works and works and works on those areas that we need it, and it becomes more uh, more uh, abundant to us. Should he repay it according to your terms just because you dis disavow it? You choose not. Therefore, speak what you know. Men of understanding say to me, wise men who listen to me. The wise men don't listen to the young men. Wise men, if you're called wise, the only way you're wise is from the glory of the Lord. It's the wisdom of, of the two part of the nine gifts of the gifts of the Spirit. The gift of wisdom and the gift of knowledge. And that can only come through the Holy Spirit. And it can only come through the Word of God. That's the only wise in this world that thinks men are wise. You know, the clever, the slick willies, the whole these people who just quote, uh, plot in vain. I'm, I'm reading a new book by Peter Schweitzer that's just absolutely just... 
blows you away of all the government scandals that go on and all these families that try to get themselves rich in politics and, and, and just cheat skip and steal just to get more money. How much money is enough? How much money is enough? And at the end of the day, some go to jail, some die, and you can't take it with you. And you got to look at your maker in the eye and say, look how many people I hurt. Look how I put my own country in a bad situation because of my greed, because of my greed and me and wanting more and more and more. And if God is taking back the, the, the scales of justice, he's opening up the scales of justice. He's bringing back the curtain so light shines in so that it can be disinfected so that we can have this last outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Job speaks without knowledge. His words are without wisdom. Here he is judging him. Again, that's the church today. They're hypocrites. As we said many times, 76% of all people who have left the church through the denomination, mostly it's denominations that are just pummeling, uh, it's because they they felt that the denomination or the church uh, that they went to was were hypocrites. Seventy six percent believe that they they would tell them one thing and but do another. We, we, the church is a church for it's a it's a hospital for sinners, not a museum for saints. We're supposed to build the church up, and the church is not a building. Jesus told us that over and over again. You read Paul's Paul's epistles. These churches were in people's houses. The church of Thessalonica wasn't in a big fat building with a mega church that said, welcome to the church of Thessalonica with the senior pastor's picture on it and calling him doctor. No, it was all one church called the Ecclesia and Christ the head. And it was J. J. Vernon McGee about 30 years ago when I started get really started getting into the Bible, studying some of J. Vernon McGee's studies. And he, said, he mentioned something just absolutely amazing. And at that time, I thought, that could never happen. This, is, this was probably 2009 or 2010. I was reading some of his work. And he said, the latter church, before the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, will go back into a house. They will go back into the, the housing of the church will spread. And it's interesting. I was studying that the growth of the church today uh, throughout the world is in home churches. One, because they're persecuted. You have to do it away from the government. But in the United States, we're seeing a huge growth. Uh, the eight uh, there's a faster growing, uh, the, the fastest growing part of Christianity is the literal infallible belief of the Bible. It's growing faster than any other denomination, any other religion. Meaning these people don't say I'm in this de de uh, de denomination or this church or whatever. I am a lover of Jesus Christ. And I believe that this is the infallible way, uh, infallible word of God. And I put this on my heart and they're meeting in churches or they're meeting in houses and they're spreading the church throughout the houses. We mentioned before that uh, the last few years, 90, 99 cents out of every dollar that goes into a church goes into building costs and salaries of the people who run the church. So there's not any money left for outreach and doing the things of, of, of the Lord. So many pastors are now saying, let's save that money instead of having a building and grow the church throughout people's houses. We'll get it up to about a group of 12, and then we'll plan another one. Just keep planning these small house churches that meet and gather and grow. And if you've ever got into a fellowship of about 10 or 12 people in a Bible study, you get the strongest growth in those smaller groups because you can interact with the love and you build each other up in prayer. Instead of being in this big, cold building, even though it may be beautiful, the Spirit of the Lord is not riding in there, but the Spirit of the Lord comes where you're at. Remember what Jesus says, whether there's two or three gathered in my name, I shall be there. He didn't say whether there's two or 300 gathered in my name in a certain building called by a certain denomination. No, it's for us. We are the church and the Holy of Holies is the heart. That's where he wants to meet us and that's where he needs to be with us always. So old Job would try to the utmost because his answers are like those of the wicked men. Accusing Job of wicked things, just like the people inside the church accusing it. You do this wrong, but I'll do this right. No, it's, it's all about God and we're all about when we're all fallen. We all do things wrong. And that's why we need to lift each other up in prayer instead of knock each other down. It's not a race of wheelchairs and try to knock the wheelchairs down. It's not to kick a woman out of a church when she's 93 years old because she didn't tithe one week. Some of the things we hear from the church is just absolutely insane. It's not a woman coming in and complaining to her pastor that somebody took her seat because that seat's been hers for 40 years. Where is love? Where's the Holy Spirit? We need to invite the Holy Spirit to come into the churches. Remember Jesus said in the church of Laodicea, which is the church age, the last church age, which we're literally in today. Jesus said he was knocking at the door. If you look at this in the Greek, it's very fascinating. 
Why is Jesus knocking at the door? Because they brought him out of the church. They kicked Jesus out of their building. Jesus is the church and he's knocking at the door. He says, come, let me in. I will dine with you. And they locked him out of the church. Bring the Christ, the Messiah, into the church. He is the church. He is the head. And we close out in verse 37. For he adds rebellion to his sin. We rebel when we continue to sin. And he claps his hand among us in the multiple of those words against Elohim, judging Job incorrectly and wrongly. And the Lord's going to do a boomerang. It's the year of the boomerang. What the world thought was going to happen is going to come right back because God is a God of justice. His scales are righteous, and all he wants is your heart and love. And those who show him the love and pick him through his son, Jesus Christ, will have salvation. And then he says, work with me, walk with me, know my word. You're not done yet, my child. I got a plan for you. You're to finish the race and do my will for your life because that's what the Bema Seat's all about. Will we have a full report card when we go to the Bema Seat? Or will our report card be empty? It's our choice. If you're following His Glory on YouTube, please click the avatar at the right-hand side. Uh, we'll be doing more stuff in the future on YouTube uh, exclusively. So click on the, the His Glory logo or the avatar and subscribe to His Glory. God bless each and every one of you, and good Friday to our Messiah and our Savior, Jesus Christ.